all right guys so i'm gonna be showing you how you can turn your old playstation 4 into a full-fledged gaming pc as you can see right now i'm running steam right now on a ps4 and it's not just that you can do every single thing that you can do on a gaming pc on your playstation 4 i'm talking about editing i'm talking about streaming and basically every single thing your ps4 is gonna turn into a gaming pc so i have a ps5 you guys already know that but i had my ps4 lying around and i decided to turn into a gaming pc and i'm gonna be showing you how you can actually do that it's not that tough it's not rocket science this tutorial is gonna be really beginner friendly and you can do all kind of things and uh, even the keyboard and everything works so let me just go here steam but let me see where i can use the keyboard library yeah so here search every single thing works it's just so insane that you can do on your ps4 any ps4 would work by the way and this is my not new setup i moved to a new place so that's why it's kind of messed up here but yeah let's get right into it and let me show you how you can turn your ps4 into a gaming pc all right so first thing what you need is you need to have a usb drive and i would recommend to have a hard drive or any pen drive usb drive that is at least um, 32 gigs or more because you're going to be installing games in your pc right i mean the ps4 you're going to turn into a pc so i'm using this one terabyte hard drive and make sure the um, usb drive is formatted to 532 so right now it's in ntfs so you can use a software called rufus pretty simple and easy you just want to have to select and if you're using a hard drive make sure you click on this list usb hard drive select that click on non-bootable and then change it to large FAT32 and if you're using a USB drive, a small one, it, it'll be just um, FAT32. So remember, non-bootable FAT32. And then you're going to have to format it and uh, make sure you use a USB drive that is um, completely empty because you're going to lose all of the data that you have in your hard drive or USB drive. And now once that's done, you're going to have to copy some files. So these files are going to be, I mean, not these files, the one I'm showing, these are the Rufus files. So these files are going to be for your OS that you're going to be installing, that we are going to be installing. So how do you know which file do you need? So every PS4 have a Southbridge um, version. So my Southbridge version is by Cal B1. If you have a modded PS4, jailbroken PS4, you can go to system settings. It will show you what version of Southbridge you have. So for me... I'm going to be needing these files and all of the file links are going to be in the description by the way. So for Baikal B1, the kernel is going to be different and there's like a, um, I, I forgot the name of the Southbridge versions, but different PS4 have different ones. So you have to download these files according to your um, Southbridge version. And once you have that, you're going to have to copy all of the files into the root of your USB, either hard drive or a uh, pen drive. So once those are copied, you need to make sure one thing. So let me show you this file right here. It's going to be um, the largest file. So this is the OS file that we're going to be installing. That's going to turn our PS4 into a gaming PC. And uh, this boot strikes, uh, boot starts, I don't know how to pronounce it. So we don't need that. These three files are going to be important. And make sure the main file, the OS file, the larger file is named as PSXITARCH. It's going to be in different names depending on which one you download. Make sure you rename it to PSXITARCH. So that's going to be the main file. Second file is going to be this int, uh, intramfs. This is going to be for the kernel. And the BZ image is going to be the one that's going to boot us into shell. So remember, these three files are really important. And again, you're going to have to download these according to your um, Southbridge version. So BZ image, intramfs, and the OS file. That will be PSXITARCH file. So anyway, once you have these three files copied, and by the way, if you have a Baikal, a Southbridge version, you can use the same files that I'm using right now. I will leave a link for those as well. So once you have these files, you can simply go back and connect the USB into your PS4. So as you can see, my PS4 is jailbroken. And by the way, if you want to jailbreak your PS4, I made a video about it. Literally within five minutes, you can jailbreak any PS4. I will link down the video link as well in the description because it's not a rocket science to jailbreak a PS4. You can do it like every person can do it and it's going to take less than five minutes. So check the video out if you want to jailbreak your PS4. So anyway, once you have a jailbroken PS4, once you have all the files into a USB, 
you will have to do some settings into your PlayStation. First, it's going to be connected to the internet. And for the love of God, do not update your PS4 if the update option pops up. Because if you're going to connect your PS4, the jailbroken PS4, to the internet, it's going to say update your PS4. Don't do that. So once you have internet connected, you're going to have to go to um, hand settings, server settings, and enable the bin loader server. And uh, after that, you're going to have to go to... Um, system information and here you can see it says Southbridge B1 that is my Southbridge version of my PS4 a lot of PS4 have different versions so make sure you know your Southbridge version before downloading the files so once that's done second setting is going to be the most important setting it's going to be in the video output setting so you see I have a PS4 Pro it supports up to 4k resolution but we need is 1080p RGB range full HDR it's on you I would prefer turning it off. Deep color output, make sure it's automatic. So this should be the video output information because um, the OS we're going to be installing to turn our PS4 into gaming PC, it's not going to support other resolution in the beginning. So now what you want to do is after you have the USB plugged in, after you have all the settings done, you will have to go to es7in1.site. This is going to be the website. So S-I-T-E, there you go. And on this site, you're going to have to go to the exact um, links that I'm going to show you. So first of all, let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see clearly. You're going to have to click on Triple P W N P P P W N. It'll open this. Click on Chameleon. And there's going to be a whole lot of options. It's like so confusing, right? A lot of options. But you don't need any of these options. What you need is this one, Linux VRAM Payload. And from here... You have to choose whatever jailbroken version you have. The latest one is 11.0. Made a video about it. So you're going to have to click on the one that says Linux VRAM 1 GB version. So you can increase the VRAM after you have installed this OS, the Linux um, OS into your PlayStation. But in the beginning, for your first boot, you're going to have to choose the 1 GB version. And it'll say no video. It'll shut off your PS4 and it's going to reboot. And you're going to have to look for your PS4 um light indicator it has to turn blue if it turns white you're gonna have to redo all of the process but if it turns blue wait for a while it will say no video for like let's say a minute and then it's gonna boot up into the screen right here and now once you're booting up into this screen just wait here it's gonna give you an error and it is expected don't freak out if it gives you error you're gonna be like why isn't it booting just wait here and after a while it'll give you this error and now what you want to do is let me zoom in you're gonna have have to type in exec space install dash psxitarch dot sh so there's our file name right click on enter and for me it says um the interim fs file didn't um say anything i mean it didn't copy or something file failed but don't worry about it just wait here and it Detected my USB size. It says 932 gigs. That's my hard drive that I have connected. So say here and From here, it's gonna take about let's say 10 to 15 minutes depending on your hard drive and After it's done, uh, it's gonna start doing a lot of things. So just see You just wanna have to wait on this screen at the at the moment and by the way while we're waiting for the boot to happen How about you guys subscribe to my channel because I'm gonna be posting a lot of PlayStation and PC related videos. Let's say the next video is going to be how to play online on a jailbroken PS4 and how to play PS5 games on PS4. And I'm not even kidding. I have all of these videos planned. So make sure to subscribe and turn on the post notification so you don't miss out on any of the really interesting console and PC videos. So anyway, you guys can see it's doing the thing and uh, it's gonna take a while from here by the way it's gonna take at least about 15 minutes if you're using a usb 3.1 hard drive but if you're using a pen drive the normal usb stick it's gonna take up to 30 minutes because um it's gonna be extracting all of the files and also there's another method to do this but i would not prefer that one because that one requires you to have a linux based pc and it's really confusing and normal people would not do that but this one any person who is watching this video can understand how to do this literally just gonna have to copy paste file and write some commands right so anyway after it's done it's gonna give you another error you see I got an error let me just zoom in the error is um, failed to uh, mount a new road so you're gonna have to type mount space dash O 
space ro space slash new root you wanna have to type this command twice and by the way make sure you have a keyboard and mouse connected on your playstation 4 that is gonna be important because i forgot to tell you guys that so again you wanna have to type mount dash o space ro space slash new root so once you have typed that click enter again it'll say not su such file or directory but that's fine and now you will have to type in exec space start start uh, dash p s x i t a r c h sorry not c h s h and now it's gonna boot you into the whatever um, os you have chosen for your playstation for me it's arc uh, arch linux and uh, after it's done it's gonna take a while again and now it's gonna reboot your playstation and after this you will be able to use the mouse onto the screen that means you have done everything correctly and as you can see now now we have booted into linux that is literally an os for pc and it is running on a playstation and from here you can connect um your playstation to wi-fi and i'm just gonna do that real quick and i will just start steam and show you so that's how you can turn your playstation 4 into a gaming pc and by the way any software that works on linux based pc it's going to be running on your PlayStation and trust me, it's so good that you can do all of this onto a PlayStation and PS4 is literally about 12 year old console. So there's that. So this is how you can turn your PlayStation 4 into a gaming PC and uh, you can do a whole lot of things. You can play PS2 games, you can play PS3 games, you can play um, PC games as well, obviously, because there's Steam in it and you can do all kind of things that you can do on a gaming PC. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Again, how to play online on a jailbroken PS4 is going to be my next video. And after that, I'll show you how to play PS5 games on PS4. And no joke. So yeah, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.